Good evening. So are you so tired of hearing about inflation, taxes, and recession? I am. I'm Kaylee. I'm the teacher of finances. And tonight I'm going to break something down for you real quick. We're going to go fast. Um, I'm so late tonight coming on here because I had some things that I had to work on throughout the day. And here I am. It's been a crazy, crazy Friday, but it is Friday. And I'm thankful we didn't have homework today. Um, if you're catching this live, drop me a one in the comments. If you get it afterwards, drop me a two. I would greatly appreciate that. So I just wanted to kind of come on here and talk a little bit about, about the world and what's going on. It's Friday, so on Fridays, you know, we talk about finances. So um, you keep hearing about recession. We keep seeing taxation. We keep seeing um, inflation rates go up. It's crazy, crazy, right? So have you recently switched jobs? Or maybe did you leave your job during COVID? I know there's been tons and tons of people in the medical industry that have left their jobs because of back when COVID happened. Um, so have you left your job recently or any time have you left a job and got a new one? Maybe you've recently moved jobs because you needed a better pay scale. You got offered more money and you thought, you know what, this is gonna be my ticket to help make it easier on my family. Um, I get it, that's you know a normal thing, especially right now. So what, um, what is it that you're doing for your family right now? What type of work are you doing? And is it things like, are you able to keep up? Are you able to stay on top of things? Or is it hard for you? Because I know it is, it's crazy for us right now. I literally got a deal in the mail today telling me again that our mortgage payment was going up. And I'm like, are you kidding me? It's went up like almost $400 since we bought our house. And it just, every year, it's like it just keeps increasing. I'm like, oh my gosh, and I don't feel like we're getting any further ahead, <laughs> right? So anyways, history repeats itself. So it has to get better, right? It has to be better at some point. And I could go on and on about political views and this and that, but I'm not going to do that. But it has to get better. But then it possibly and probably will get worse again. Go look it up. If you don't believe me, I have a graph. I can show you of what happens over year, the years and how everything just constantly goes up and down, up and down. It happens. Back in 2008, people lost almost 50% of their retirement income, um, plans overnight, went to bed and woke up and had 50% of their retirement plan gone. It happens. So my question for you though is, can you handle these crazy fluctuations over the next 20 to 30 years, depending on where you're at in life? Maybe 10 maybe 15. Can you actually handle that? So I've actually put it together a guide for you um, and it's called planning when facing a recession. If this is something that you're interested in, I can send it over to you. Um, just drop in the comments plan and I will send you a message and I'll get that over. It's just a guide that I put together that helps you think about how to handle um, things during the recession and different things that you can do to make it easier on your family. So with that being said, though, I'm going to go to the next point. I need you to think for just a second. We're gonna talk about jobs tonight. We're gonna to talk about what you can do and different things like that. But I need you to think for a second. What are your plans to get ahead of this mess of the, the economy that we have right now? It's hard. I get it. So I want you to stop and go through your head and think of every job that you had and if you had an account that was like a retirement account there. Did you leave any of it behind? I know you took all your personal belongings. You didn't leave the pictures of your sweet little kids on your desk over there or your jackets or your pins or all the crafts that your kids made you to decorate your office. You took your personal, personal belongings, but did you take that retirement account that you contributed to? People forget their retirements and their 401s all the time. I helped my father-in-law Find, like go through one we searched and searched for one and we don't I mean we don't even really know where it's at because the company is not there anymore and so you have to keep looking if you don't take it when you go so people forget about it and then they lose it 25 million accounts are forgotten or lost that's a lot y'all that's almost a hundred uh, one point three trillion dollars are left behind so is your money out there just hanging out? I make the comment all the time, like, is it with your ex? Did you leave your money with your ex? Is it just hanging out over there? You don't know what, you have no idea what's going on with it, right? So here's what you need to do. I'm gonna give you a, a couple different options. I'm gonna break down the options for you. 
So the absolute worst thing that you can possibly do is pull it out. So depending on your age, the state you live in, and um, where you're at, I'm sorry, depending on your age and the state in which you live in, you're going to be taxed on it. Okay, that rate can be anywhere from 20 to 40 percent. It's not worth losing that much money when you're when there's so many other alternatives out there for you. So it's very possible that you've already lost a lot of money in it. And if you pull it out, just say, you know what, I'm cashing the whole thing out, you are going to lose so much money. So rolling it over to a new 401k is another option that you can do. So you change jobs and now you're working with somebody else, so you can roll it over to a new employer, which sounds great. But here's the reason why that you really don't want to do that. You left that job. And so if you're not 59 and a half, this is the only time that you can take that money and put it in your own control. So since you left that job, you can do something else with it. You can roll it over into another um, plan with your employer, and that plan is going to be an employer-sponsored plan, which means now you're back at the risk of losing money, you lose control of it, and you lose the possibility of making it where you can access it and have some fluidness to it. So what you can do that's going to be the best option and has so much more flexibility and control for you is you put it into an individual retirement account, an IRA. Now, people will say, well, I'm not going to get taxed on that. No, because we put it in a traditional one. And if it's a traditional 401, we put it in a traditional IRA. Not only does it give you access to owning it and controlling it, you cut out all the uh, um, chances of even losing anything. You eliminate 100% of your risk if you're doing this in the right type of account. Remember, going on to your 401k employer sponsored plan and saying, hey, I just want to move this into something that you already have. Now, you're not guaranteed to face the no losses. You still could be in a risky account. But I'm coming to you to explain to you that there are things out there that you can lock it down, secure it, but keep growing it massively. So depending on your needs and when you think you might need access to it, there's multiple different ways that you can do it. But the best part of all is that you never lose a penny of it. And you take control. You know that it's yours. You know where it's at. You know how to change the statements if you move all of it. You get to take back control. You're guaranteed to grow it, and you don't have to add anything else to it. So you're not putting any more money in there. You're literally taking your balance and moving it. Okay? Then you also have the option with these types of accounts to build some liquid assets. So depending on your age, if you're already retired, but you're sick of seeing your money just go away and you're not getting it in your bank account, then you can set one up that has an immediate income on it. So there's, I mean, the ideas and the possibilities of what you can do is just crazy and I know all of it sounds so good like oh that's too good to be true I get it before I got in this industry and when I was studying and learning and going through all the products and trying to figure out the whole industry I was like that's nerves no way but there is a way guys there is a way I made a reel about it the other day the rich get rich by using these type of ways <laughs> And that doesn't even make sense. That's not even correct grammar, but I'm just throwing it out there to you. Walt Disney um, actually used different types of insurance products account to fund Disney. McDonald's, same thing. There are several different people that have made these huge organizations, and they use money from an insurance product. So that was just random. That wasn't even on my notes. Um, but anyways, I do this with families all the time. Another question for you is, do you have a lump sum stack of cash just hanging out over there, just barely earning 2%? So move it to a compounded interest account and let it grow. I know a lot of the times we put money in savings account and CDs because they're safe, but there are other alternatives that are still safe. It doesn't have to be through a bank. How many banks have you heard of going, having issues and losing money and all these different things back in the over time I say back in the days over time you hear about banks going under all the time right fixed index annuities and fixed annuities over 160 years have never lost never lost anything to me that's like that's the option right so how much of that um, with the CD let's say you have a CD how much of it can you actually 
utilize? Like, are you able, if you get in a crunch, say you have it in a three-year CD, you get in a crunch and you need to take some out. Can you take any of it out without penalties? That's a good question. I don't work at a bank. Couldn't tell you. I do know that I have had a CD before and I had it in a one-year account and I was not able to take any of it out. I had to leave it there. So what I'm telling you is though these types of accounts, um, some of them you can take out 5%, some of them you can take out 10%. And it's called a pen penalty-free withdrawal. And then I'm not even going to start going all into the fact of taxes when it comes to CDs, but you've paid the money that's on it. You've paid taxes on the money that's in that CD. It grows. If you leave it there, you're going to be taxed on it then. If you take it out, you're being taxed on it then. Putting your money in a tight, these accounts that I'm mentioning, which is a, we'd have to do a zoom and I would break it down even more. I'm just giving you a real basic overview. But putting it in an account that I'm talking about, you're not taxed on the gains. So if you have money, and remember, we're not talking 401s anymore. We're talking savings, CDs, things that you, maybe money you just stuffed up underneath your couch, right? We're talking about post-tax. You've already paid taxes on this money. You can put it in these different types of accounts and let it grow, and when you get ready to pull it out, you're not taxed on it. Wow. It's like mind-blowing to me. It just gets me fired up. It's exciting because there's other things out there. And just a disclosure and disclaimer, I'm not a tax advisor. I'm not giving you tax advice. I'm just letting you know the, the difference in between the two types of accounts. Okay, what about that time you left a job and you rolled over money, but you went ahead and you kept it with your financial advisor and it's in the stock market still, but you're not putting any more money in it. So what does that mean? Now the stocks are going up and down, up and down, going crazy. You're losing money and you're not putting anything back in there. Now, can they grow? Yes, they can grow. Do you know how long it takes for you to recover funds that you lose though? It could take up to 15 years for you to recover a massive, like in 2008, for example, it took almost 15 years for people's accounts to, re, uh, to recover. I was doing some research today and, um, Oh, I was like, what did my note say? Sorry. I was doing research today and I was researching about this company and a particular product this company offers to someone that I was working with. And every time they purchase, reinvest, or exchange, fees are charged. This particular company literally charges 2% for every time that transaction happens. Not to mention 1.5% just for a program fee. It's mind blowing to me. There's so much money that's just being thrown out the door that you're never going to get to see. I don't have a securities license. Here's my disclaimer again. And so I'm not able to even invest in any type of stock account. Can't do that. That's not what I do. Um, but these types of accounts, I do have somebody on my team that can and can look at what you have and decide what's best, but I'm not in, I can't do that. But what I can do is break down the statement help you understand what the fees are for, and just explain where your money is going. Um, when it comes to anything that's in the stocks, mutual funds, what I do help customers with or clients with is I call the company with them and I walk them through the process of moving it from one company to another. When you move it to one company to another, you're not penalized for it because you're going from an entity to another entity. No penalization on that. So if you have old money floating around in those statements, Right now, go get your statement. I said in those statements, sorry, in those stocks. If you have money floating around in the stocks and it's not attached to your 401k, please go get your statement and just go and look through it and see how many, um, how much you paid in fees. It may say sweep. Sometimes it'll say a sweep. Go look and see how much you paid. Probably going to be surprised. And if you're not happy with it, then click my link, schedule an appointment. But there's compounded interest accounts out there that can offer your family a guaranteed income for life. So what I do is I sit and I help you and I look at it and we say, okay, this is how much money you want at retirement age, or this is how much money you want for guaranteed income for your life. This is when we need to do and this is how we do it. So we come up with a retirement plan. And then you also get bonuses in some different types of plans that help you with that guaranteed income for life. So if you've lost a significant amount of money 
and you're fed up with it and you're tired of hearing about recession and you don't know how you're going to handle taxation and inflation and all the Asians, then it's probably time we need to sit down and chat. And I know I'm being like super direct and so specific about it today, but it's so important to protect what you've worked for. I've worked since I was 18 years old. I took my, my TRS and I put it into something I own and control. I've done it for myself, so I don't sit here and preach this stuff. I don't bring anything to you that I don't believe in and have done for myself. But now it's time for you to decide if you're going to take action. So maybe you're not in this exact situation right now, which is, that's awesome. I'm glad you're 100% taken care of. But more than likely, you know somebody that is. So think about the people that are around you. Do you know someone that's fixing to retire? Do you know somebody that just went through retirement and is freaking out because they're probably gonna have to go back to work? Could they benefit from this information? Just to give you an idea, in my circle of people, I have helped three close family members. It's crazy, you just don't realize, but people are there, there's people going through this and maybe they need to see this, maybe they need to hear this, so you share it. Send it to them. Direct message it to them. I don't care how you do it. Just let them know that there's other things out there. That they've worked for this many years of their life. They don't have to keep working. They can do something different. They can reevaluate their situation. So if you want more information on any of this, you can just type want in the comments and I'll just send you a direct message. Um, you can always direct message me at any time to ask me any questions. I'd love to answer them for you. And then again, if you have somebody and you're thinking in your head, well, this doesn't really pertain to me, but I know such and such, then just send them my information or just let me know and I can reach out to them. So people need to hear this because it's so, there's, I feel like it's golden nuggets that I didn't know about and I'm thankful I found about, out about them at the age of 32. <laughs> the process is super simple. I literally jump on a um, Zoom call with you. We go over the situation. We make up a game plan. And then as an independent agent, I get to choose how I run my business. And so I don't charge you anything to sit down and look at your situation. And then if you have funds that you need to roll and you want to take control of, it doesn't cost you anything to do that. So if that means you and I have to sit on the phone with your investment company for two hours to get through to them because it happens, I'm not charging you for an hour to sit on the phone with you. I'm here to help you. So make sure you know you think about what money do you have left out there that you want to go ahead and grab and take control of again. Um, and then I actually even help with like sometimes we have to overnight stuff. When I say I try not to have my clients pay for anything when it comes to rollovers, I mean it. Like I'll even... Uh, reimburse you fees if you have to send it overnight like the mailing fees take care of you <laughs> but anyways I hope this information was super valuable to you um, it's just been so big on my mind and so big on my heart I just keep seeing crazy things and hearing crazy stories so of course I have to just let you guys know about it um, if you got any value out of this if you found this stuff um, informational educational drop value in the comments for me and um, that just lets me know that you like it and what to um, provide you with next time so um, it's Friday so tomorrow I don't know what I have going on I'm probably sleeping because I'm ex very very exhausted today <laughs> and I've pushed through but I am probably going to sleep in tomorrow I'm excited about getting a little bit of extra rest and I will see you guys on Monday for mine uh, for uh, Mythbuster Mondays have a good weekend be safe